Hello guys, we are the Radiology in the Cloud team and our project seeks to implement practical, scalable and flexible solutions to medical image processing. The field of medical image processing is a challenging space. Hospitals and researchers increasingly want to run processes on medical images and analyze the results. The challenge lies in running these processes smoothly and efficiently and giving the professionals the flexibility to introduce new image processing jobs of their own with ease. Currently, the Boston Children's Hospital has a web application called CRIS or Children's Research Integration System that retrieves patient images from a local database on the hospital server, performs computations on them using plugins and outputs the results to the user interface. However, they needed a service to execute these jobs quickly and efficiently. These jobs are extremely resource intensive and it is not practical for the hospitals to run many of these jobs simultaneously on their own hardware due to lack of resources in their local infrastructure. The cost of upgrading their hardware to support it is also not feasible. There is no avenue for the users to deploy and run customized jobs on their data. This is where the infinite computing power of the cloud comes into play. Our project vision consists of collaborating with the Chil Boston Children's Hospital and their existing system and creating a platform where our targeted users, namely researchers, doctors and clinicians can easily query data, run their preferred jobs on anonymized images on the cloud and analyze the results in a quick and efficient manner. We envision implementing a solution which allows users, including those with little technical background, to deploy their own image processing applications. To do this, we plan to use OpenShift, which is a container-based platform. By running the CRIS backend in an OpenShift cluster hosted on the Massachusetts Open Cloud, developers can easily write and deploy containerized jobs, which are much more lightweight and easier to create than virtual machine instances. The users would no longer need to bother with hardware and computation costs, allowing them to focus solely on creating their applications. Ultimately, our motivation was to create a system that was easy to develop for, run several jobs in parallel, scale out, and be deployed by other hospitals for running their image processing algorithms and analyze the results. There are a couple of pieces that make up the CRIS system. First is Orthanc, which is the image database. Next is the CRIS front end, which is the user interface that doctors or clinicians would be exposed to. The backend system, on the other hand, orchestrates and runs the computations and processes on images. The backend communicates with both the plugins that perform the computations and the image database. It then displays the result on the front end. In the existing architecture, all of the components, including the high performance computational tools, are stored on the Boston Children's Hospital's local server. As mentioned before, this is not ideal. The new architecture that our team incorporated was using OpenShift. OpenShift is a cluster residing on the Massachusetts Open Cloud. This way, jobs involving high-performance computations would be performed on the cloud. In the new architecture, the backend would send a request to OpenShift and have a more powerful computer perform operations on the images. The results would then be sent back for the user. There are many tools that could be used to deploy containers and launch jobs. However, we used OpenShift because their container development platform allows us to develop, deploy, and manage containers in an effective and efficient way. OpenShift is able to deploy Docker images as services, and since we had Docker containers for the original system, we thought that OpenShift would be best to transition quickly into the cloud in a compatible manner. Aside from convenience, OpenShift had a lot of other advantages that aligned with our goals for the architecture of the project. First, it was lightweight and easy to deploy, as OpenShift accepted containers. It was also portable so that other hospitals could use the same architecture and quickly develop their own version of CRIS. OpenShift also has built-in process managers that monitor the progress of every job running, and also can delete all sensitive data once it has performed all the computations. As a result, OpenShift was a great choice and enabled us to reach out to Red Hat for mentorship. Now we are going to show you the complete overview of our system starting from Orthanc. Orthanc is a lightweight, restful DECOM server for medical imaging. Data from Orthanc can be pulled for image processing. In order to push upward data from Orthanc, three containers need to be set up. 
The Orthon container itself, which runs on a DACM server, the Chris backend container with the DACM listener, which runs on the storage server, and the Chris frontend container. The DACM server has network access to the storage server through the DACM listener. Then the Altran server, or Chris backend, has network access to the PAC server, and this is how the backend would access the MRI images from the storage and display them on the front end or for downloading. Now that we've explained the image database in detail, we will now explore the other half of the infrastructure, which is the backend and the OpenShift cloud component. To elaborate on how the system functions on a higher level, we would first start off with the CRISP backend. We did not have time to fully incorporate our backend into the existing solution, and so we simulated a backend using a shell script. The shell script is a template that orchestrates all the image processing using OpenShift, and enables the user to get the output of the data being processed. As we can see in the diagram, it is a simple process which will be explained in detail later. By having the job orchestration be run by the backend rather than within OpenShift, we are taking the backend development and separating it from image processing development. This means that other people who are, slight, who are only slightly familiar with OpenShift could develop the underlying management architecture and simply run jobs on the OpenShift cluster using our template. Other people developing image processing jobs would only need to know how to create a containerized version of it. This would make it easier for both developers or admins. And this would also enable people to build into the existing system. Our second goal was making our system easily deployable by hospitals and portable. All of our components are already containerized and are available on GitHub, making it very portable. In the most simple use case, a hospital could deploy an OpenShift environment provided by a cloud service company such as the Mass Open Cloud. They would then configure their OpenShift environment such that it would build from our GitHub repository. The third goal was to make our system scalable. OpenShift enables easy scalability by allowing multiple jobs to run in parallel with the pipeline process. As a result, even large hospitals or small, or small private practices could use our system and scale it to their needs. Before we get into detail as to what exactly happens in OpenShift, we wanted to give a quick summary as to how it was set up and some key concepts. OpenShift is set up as a three-node cluster in the mass open cloud. Within OpenShift, there are pods and persistent volumes. Pods are containers deployed on one host, and persistent volumes are a storage resource on the OpenShift cluster. We use the pods to deploy our computation containers, and the persistent volumes are used for storing the files that need to be processed. Now we will go into more detail about the low-level architecture of our system. Here's a low-level overview of our system workflow. First, to initiate running a job in OpenShift, the CRISP backend must send a job request to the file I.O. server container that is running in OpenShift. The command has three parameters. The job name, which is randomly generated using an OpenShift API to ensure uniqueness, the data needed for running the job, and the job you intend to run on that data. The file I.O. server is designed to handle these requests by moving the data into a directory within its file system that is named after the job name parameter it was passed. The randomized job names ensure that no two directories share the same name to avoid problems. The backend then wraps the newly created job name directory in a persistent volume, which allows us to mount containers on that directory. The backend then creates a job template with OpenShift API calls, which specifies which pod to run and mounts that pod on the persistent volume that was just created. Once the pod gets mounted onto the persistent volume, OpenShift automatically runs the pods based on what is specified in the job template. OpenShift keeps a flag that marks a job as either running or completed. Our backend script waits on this flag until it gets marked completed, and once it is, the backend can check another flag in OpenShift to see if the job succeeded or failed. If the job succeeds, then it will pull the data from OpenShift directly using a curl command. The output of the job is put in the same directory that the input data is in, and output files end in .out so they can easily be identified. 
What we have built together is a proof of concept that shows a full end-to-end -end of running a job on the crisp backend on the cloud. The simula simulated backend stands as a model of the existing backend. We were successfully able to send and receive files from OpenShift as well as call OpenShift's API to run the image processing. To do so, we had set up a standard protocol of calling OpenShift. The OpenShift component was much larger. We first created an OpenShift cluster on the Massachusetts Open Cloud containing three nodes. We then set up a persistent volume so that we could receive and store images in persist persistent memory. Then we ran a sample job in the cluster using the files in memory and wrote back to another file in memory. After the image processing was complete, we were able to erase potentially sensitive images from memory for security purposes. The hospital data is anonymized for security, and our system transfers them to the cloud through a safe WebSocket con connection. Due to the sheer number of parts to this project, we spent a lot of time trying to get familiar with all of its components. In Sprint 1, most of our time was spent trying to learn how the Boston Children's Hospital system currently works and how the technologies we would be using to implement our extension of this project. This is why a lot of our objectives involved tasks such as finalizing a project proposal, clarifying what parts of the system, CRIS system do, and learning how to run VMs on the MOC. By Sprint 2, we initiated weekly meetings with our mentor from the Boston Children's Hospital, which helped us get a better understanding of how CRIS worked and got more comfortable with all the technologies involved. During the sprint, we were also able to set up functioning instances of CRIS running on our local machines. Sprints 3, 4, and 5 were when we made the most progress as OpenShift came into our project. We were assigned three Red Hat mentors who helped us set up three OpenShift nodes on our MOC instance. They set up the user interface, which we then used to start developing and deploying containers on OpenShift. During Sprint 3, since we, have, we had already been able to run each component locally, our mission was to have a complete end-to-end -end demo running on OpenShift. However, after much time spent trying to deploy the containerized services on OpenShift, we came to realize that the process manager, which was the main component that the entire system seems to be built around, wasn't actually written in a way that was compatible with OpenShift. Instead of having a separate container for the process manager and the file I.O. manager, both were contained in one Docker container that exposed different ports based on which service was called. This was not compatible with how services are typically exposed on the cloud and prevented us from utilizing OpenShift to deploy the Docker images. Consequently, we had to separate the containers to be able to use them. In Sprint 4, we managed to separate the Process Manager and the File I.O. Manager into their own Docker containers, allowing us to deploy them on OpenShift. However, when we tried to push or pull data using the File I.O. container, we realized the parser library was expecting an IP address and a port instead of the URL we were using. After this realization, we were able to change the code within the parser library to allow for op the OpenShift root URL, which we were required to use. We thought this was the final hurdle, but after deploying it, we came to realize that the file I.O. manager still wasn't working as OpenShift expected. In Sprint 5, we discovered that the file I.O. manager wasn't encapsulating responses as proper HTTP responses, but instead writing a JSON string directly to the socket. It seemed like that would be a quick fix, but realized it would actually require rethinking how all parts of the system would work with each other, and at this point in the project would unfortunately be out of scope. We then developed a simulated system that would essentially be a proof of concept for how the CRIS system would eventually work. Now you will see a complete end-to-end -end demo that simulates how the CRIS backend will interact with the OpenShift cluster on the MOC. We put together a complete end-to-end -end demo. However, we couldn't get a real image processing job to work on OpenShift due to time constraints, so instead we made our own sample job. The sample job is a simple container that takes a text file's input, reverses it, and writes a new file with the reversed output. On the right, you can see the text file that we will use as our input. The text on the second line is backwards and should be readable if the job runs successfully. In OpenShift, you can actually see the job containers get spun up and run. As you can see, 
The line is now readable, showing that our pipeline works. While working on this project, we have learned how to use and integrate OpenShift, and how to write batch scripts to launch jobs through OpenShift. We have also learned about implementing Docker containers. We have gained some Python coding experience and networking knowledge over the course of this project as well. On the non-technical side of the project, we have learned how to plan our sprints and predict potential difficulties we might face in the course of the project. Uh, lastly, we've gained some essential experience in working as a team and presenting the project in class. We had many mentors working with us, and it was an extremely enriching experience learning from people having a wide and varied knowledge base. But at the same time, we had a few issues scheduling meetings and coordinating with all of them. All of the mentors had different visions and ideas for the project, so it was difficult to incorporate all of their ideas and decide on certain specific tasks for a project. Using the Agile methodology to keep track of the project workflow was also a challenge for us. We're introduced to Open. OpenShift platform fairly late during the course of the project. Uh, so this was a challenge for us because um, none of us had prior experience related to OpenShift. With the help of our Red Hat mentors, we were able to work around this challenge successfully. The Docker containers, which were a part of the already existing system, were not um, cloud compatible. And that was a significant challenge on the technical front as well. The first goal would be developing the backend further to integrate with our system. As is, the CRISP backend cannot talk to OpenShift. To enable this communication, we would model the changes based off of the simulated backend we created. Eventually, the front end could be extended to have a UI element that initiates the communications to OpenShift and calls the changes that we've made to the backend to run jobs remotely on the Massachusetts Open Cloud. So the front end could then have two options of running a job locally or on the MOC. The second goal would be to implement a more advanced user authentication that is encrypted, and also to scale our system to more than three nodes. This way, our system could be expanded to other hospitals with more processing nodes and personalized user to hospital features. The standardized pipeline could then be expanded indefinitely. We had the opportunity to work in an environment which initiated us to the software development team culture prevalent in industry. While we did face challenges with our burn down charts for Trello on occasions, we did get a firm grasp on it as the project progressed. The desire to obtain the perfect burn down chart greatly helped us in keeping our project on track and prevented us from procrastinating too much. We tried to improve on that front till the very last sprint. The prospect of of presenting in class on a bi-weekly basis meant that we would get together and prepare PowerPoint presentations, outlining our goals and accomplishments. This work, which we put in together, also helped us understand the thought processes of each other as team members, and this helped bring out new perspectives. Initially, we were very much into details of the project, for instance, the acronyms, while presenting. This put the project slightly out of reach for a lot of our classmates. We did receive some feedback concerning it, and we tried to rectify it as soon as we could. Overall, we collectively felt that the team was very positive in receiving feedback, and all members tried to convert previous shortcomings into strengths during the next presentation. Another example of this would be our work on the project proposal, where we were able to coordinate with our mentors after getting feedback, grasp the underlying concepts even better, and produce a much better document. The regular feedback from the professors and weekly meetings with the mentors was helpful in getting a much clearer vision for the project and execute our tasks in a more efficient manner. Moreover, our mentors' willingness to carry on this project even after the end of the semester is a brilliant opportunity for all of us to continue to learn and flourish. This was a unique and enriching experience for all of us, as none of us before had been exposed to this kind of a process. We hope this prepares us for the rigors of working in the industry where different ideas collide and goals change unexpectedly. This project definitely made us a lot more flexible in our approach and more receptive to feedback. We were able to cope with the stress quite well and each individual was able to come up with his or her own strengths and rise to the occasion. The presence of different personalities in the group meant that all of us were able to help each other understand new points of view and come up with unique solutions and contributions. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Please see our GitHub page for our project proposal, installation instructions, and other information. Thank you.